Kentucky is known for fried chicken, thoroughbreds, and bourbon. And the state's distilleries make about 95% of the world's bourbon. Bourbon is in the midst of a popularity boom, and this means that more barrels of bourbon need to be made. With this bourbon boom, now you have people interested in these darker, deeper flavors and all the nuances within it. I think consumers started to look for something to drink that had heritage, had a lot of flavor that was very mixable. And five years ago, we literally ran out. Since these spirits take years to age, Kentucky distilleries are in a race to produce as much bourbon as the world can drink. There's an infinite number of ways to mix it and achieve different in products or in flavors. That's driven a lot of people to try bourbon and they realize it's so versatile in so many ways. And while this intoxicating amber liquid is steeped in tradition, some distilleries are learning a few new high-tech tricks to help with production and distribution. Wild Turkey and Buffalo Trace Distillery are two well-known Kentucky distilleries that have been around for more than 100 years each. Our distillery started up here in 1890 and our distillery was very old-fashioned. It has a lot to do with my father, you know, he's been making whiskey here for 64 years. So everything was hand up. And it was good, but you couldn't be quite as consistent because if you were cooking your corn for 20 minutes and you got to talking to your friend and it was 40 minutes that could change things. So you had a person who received and ground the grains, a person who made the mashes, a person who took care of the fermentation, a person who run the still, and a person who made yeast mashes. Now everything's through a computer system, so everything's done right on time, right when you need it to be. According to the Kentucky Distillers Association, the state's iconic distilleries filled nearly 2 million barrels of bourbon in 2017, breaking production records dating back to 1967. There are now more barrels of bourbon in Kentucky than there are people. We've been here 240 years, so we've got a lot of history. And uh, when I started in 95, we were still kind of in the past. We didn't have a single computer in the whole distillery, so we started incorporating computers and, and doing some upgrades on our systems. And what that's allowed us to do over the years is, of course, being able to manage the process a little tighter, you know. For us, it was all about capturing the history in the historical way that we have always made bourbon, but we wanted to be able to tightly manage that and be more consistent. We built Warehouse X in 2013 to allow us to look at the environment and focus on the variables like wind or airflow, temperature, humidity, and sunlight, surface temperature on barrels, uh, pressure inside the barrels. So we're able to focus on all those things and we hooked up basically digitally where we can get data continuously on uh, the 150 barrels that are there in five different chambers. And so we are able to explore those variables in all those chambers and then, of course, collect data and learn. Learn how these barrels are aging, what temperature changes due to the barrels, the fluctuations in pressures and surface temperatures. And it's about a 20-year experiment. So at the end of the 20 years, we're trying to be able to explain why a barrel tastes the way it does aged here in Buffalo Trace. Both distilleries are incorporating some new tech to improve everything from bourbon making to new products. When we moved to our new distillery, we had a little pushback from some of the older employees because they didn't understand the computers. It scared them a little bit. It was a lot different than what we'd been used to. It changed uh, the level of our people working here because our mechanics were what I called shade tree mechanics. They had wrenches in their pocket and something broke down, they were tearing it apart to figure out what it is, where now you have electrical technicians that walk up and plug a computer in to figure out what's going on. When I started, we actually wrote everything in that manual ledger and then go in there and scratch it out whenever you dumped it. Well, a few years ago, we finally caught up a little bit with everybody else and now we use RFID. So when the guy's working here, he scans it through a program, through a scanner goes right into the computer, he scans the rail, he's putting it in, so everything's sort of downloaded through that. Where for years, we were manually inputting every bit of that information in a computer, now it's done through the RFIDs. Upstarts such as Bardstown Bourbon Company are also working with state-of-the-art technology. I got my start back in 1972 at Maker's Mark. In 1988, they asked me to become master distiller. So I oversaw the whole operation for 15 more years. 
because of some beneficial changes, I retired from down there, but I really wasn't ready to quit. The actual process is still basically the same. You know, what happens in the distilleries is basically the same. You take the grain, which has starch in it, you do the cooking process, convert it to sugar, a form of sugar. You put the yeast in, you convert the sugars to alcohol. One of the things that we saw was a unique position in the market. So we created a concept for the Collaborative Distilling Program. And that program is really about making complete custom whiskey production for great established brands and then giving them the ability to make this wonderful place their home. Each one of those 22 customers or 27 mash bills, we sit down with the customer and go through every particular part of it. We are automated to the point that this procedure is loaded into the computer. It lets the operator know that it's time to do parts of the process. If, if water's been added, it's time to cook up. It lets the operator know they go and turn the valves on and actually do the process. So we really build a production uh, package that's really transparent and all the processing metrics um, that are executed across the board here. So what's that mean? So my, my condenser temperatures, fermentation temperatures, my header pressures, uh, my pump pressures, any little part of the process that can have an impact on the dissolute quality, um, we capture that in an instrument historian where we can capture that data, we can mine it, and we can make decisions that will directly affect the quality of the dissolute that we are producing for our customers. Go ahead and try, this is one of the one of the older ones, this will be very sour. Go ahead and get your finger in there. You start seeing it's sour. Now when we go back to the back, you'll see the younger fermenters where they just started. We talked about the mash flowing down. This is, it goes down the side of the spill and across these plates like this, it snakes down. That's what you're seeing. It starts all the way at the top, and it's each one of these levels, these man weights, has a plate in it with the hole. We've built one of the most sophisticated distilleries in the whiskey industry, and we produce for 22 great brands that range from large craft distilleries like High West to Jefferson's to about four to five of the biggest companies in the world. Technologies like data analytics, sensors, and industrial IoT are helping Kentucky's distillers refine their centuries-old craft and meet the rapidly growing global demand for bourbon. In my generation was anti-war, anti-government, anti-history, anti-everything. It was just that generation. So we didn't want to do anything our parents or grandparents had done. Most of them it was all about vodkas and gins and stuff like that. Now it's totally opposite. I mean, it's all about bourbon drinks and brown spirits. and It's amazing to see what's happened.